Welcome to the Gas Badge Pro Online Training Module Number 5. In this module, I will be discussing the different options of data logging within the instrument. Data logging is a method of storing gas readings electronically in the instrument's memory. These readings can then be downloaded to a computer for later reference and printout. The Gas Badge Pro also allows for calculations of TWA, time weighted averages, and STEL, short term exposure limit for averaging gas concentrations over a particular time period. All data logged information can only be viewed from a computer after downloading has occurred. The Gas Badge Pro can hold approximately one year's worth of data in the instrument's memory before downloading becomes a necessity. There are two ways that allow the user to control the data logger within the instrument. The first option is to create a new data logging session. Data logging files can be broken down into sessions. A user may want to start a new data logging session to keep the data logged information applied to a particular individual or maybe a particular job being performed. And the second option the user is able to change is the data logging intervals. The user can change the Gas Badge Pro to record an average value based on readings anywhere from 2 to 300 seconds. Like I had said earlier, the one option the user is able to access is creating a new data logging session. If the user is trying to create a new session, then they must press the up button multiple times until they see the tape icon just like the one shown here. Once the user is at the data logging screen, they must press the enter button and they will see the numerical value go up, letting the user know that they have just created a new data logging session. The second action the user is able to access is the changing of data logging intervals. If the user is trying to change this value and the instrument is already turned on, they must first turn the instrument off and then back on again in order to get into the configuration menu. Once the user has turned the instrument on, they will see this startup screen. They will see the revision number, how many days since or how many days until a calibration is due, and the most important screen is the countdown screen. Once the user sees this screen, they must press the up and down buttons at the same time for roughly three to four seconds. This will allow the user access to the configuration menu. As soon as the user is in the configuration menu, the first thing they should see is the zero with a slash through it blinking. What the user must do now is press the up button multiple times until they see this cassette tape icon just like the one shown in the screen on the right. After the user sees this icon, they must now press the enter button. Once they press the enter button, they will see the numbers start to flash. As soon as the numbers start to flash, the user can now press the up or down buttons to change this value anywhere from 2 to 300 seconds. This value is reflective of the amount of time the Gas Badge Pro will accumulate the average exposure data before writing it to the data logger. Once the user has the Gas Badge Pro's data logging interval set up, they must now press the enter button and that value is now stored in the instrument. There are two ways of getting out of the configuration mode at this time. The user can press the on off button or they can let the instrument time out and after the timeout, the instrument will go directly back to the instant gas reading screen. Available in the Gas Badge Pro are two data logging modes. One is the standard data logging mode, and the other is the alarm events. With standard data logging, the Gas Badge Pro will continuously store gas readings into the instrument's memory. The data logger can be configured to log readings at different timed intervals, anywhere from 2 to 300 seconds. The Gas Badge Pro will store a maximum of approximately one year's worth of information when data logging at 60 second intervals. With alarm events, the Gas Badge Pro will only log data when the instrument is in alarm. This is a useful option for those who do not want to review exposure data unless an alarm event occurs. This data can be reviewed as a summary whenever the instrument is downloaded or alarm events can automatically be exported to a serial infrared printer. Both of these options are employed within the Gas Badge Pro continuously. The user can easily download the recorded data logging events by using the Datalink accessory and its related software. 
The video you are now about to see is how to insert the Gas Badge Pro into the Datalink accessory. It's pretty basic, but it's very important to make sure the Gas Badge Pro is facing towards the front of the Datalink. After inserting the Gas Badge Pro into the Datalink accessory, the user must now locate the Industrial Scientific Accessory Software icon and double click on that icon. If the user cannot easily locate the Industrial Scientific Accessory Software icon, they can first press the Start button and then click on Programs. From the Programs tab, locate the Industrial Scientific Accessory Software tab and click on that tab. Once the user has clicked on the icon, they want to double check that the Gas Badge Pro is selected under the Instrument drop down menu, as well as ensuring that the correct communications port is selected. After the user has ensured that both selections are correct and the Gas Badge Pro is inserted into the data link, they can now press the Connect button to establish connection with the Gas Badge Pro. Once the user has pressed the Connect button, this is the main screen for the particular Gas Badge Pro inserted into the data link. The section on the left is where the user will find the Gas Badge Pro's current configuration. The section on the right allows the user to change some of the instrument features. If the user clicks on the Options tab, this screen will appear. The Options screen allows the user to configure the instrument to their needs. These settings can be configured by checking the box next to the corresponding feature. A check mark in the box means that that particular feature is enabled, and if there is no check mark, then that feature is disabled. If the user clicks on the Components tab, this screen will appear. By clicking on the Components tab, this tab will show the user the individual sensor installed, as well as the sensor's serial number. If the user wants to check the event log stored in the instrument, then they can click on the Event Log tab. After clicking on the Event Log tab, the user will then want to click the Download button, and the data link will load the last 15 alarm events stored inside the instrument. Once the user clicks on the Open File tab, the data link software will automatically load the entire event log file. This screen shows the user the last 15 alarm events stored inside the instrument. From here, the user can view the alarms, print the alarms, or even export the alarms to another file type. What you are going to see here is a video on how to print out the last 15 alarm events within the Gas Badge Pro using the infrared printer. First, you want to make sure the infrared printer is turned on, and then make sure the Gas Badge Pro is in the Initiate Print screen. Aim the Gas Badge Pro's infrared port at the infrared port on the printer and then press the Enter button. Wait to move the Gas Badge Pro until the printer is done printing out all of the alarm events within the instrument. And you now have a printout of the last 15 alarm events. After printing the alarm events, the user will get this receipt. The first line will show the user what type of instrument this receipt is for, as well as the instrument's serial number, and also the instrument's sensor serial number, then whatever type of sensor is installed within the Gas Badge Pro. The receipt will also give the user when the last time the instrument has been calibrated, including whether or not the Gas Badge Pro passed or failed the calibration, the time of day it was calibrated, and also the date the calibration was performed, what span reserve value the Gas Badge Pro had, and remember the span reserve value is just a calculation to let the user know how much life they have left in that particular sensor. It will also show the user the high alarm set point within the Gas Badge Pro, as well as the instrument's low alarm set point. This line lets the user know they are now looking at the alarm events stored within the Gas Badge Pro. 
This peak exposure line shows the user the highest peak the instrument saw during this particular event. This receipt will also let the user see how long the event lasted, as well as the date and the time this alarm occurred. After that, the user can write their name down or sign it, verifying who printed this receipt, as well as the date this receipt was printed, and also the time this receipt was printed as well. If the user clicks on the data logging tab, the user will see this screen. Clicking on the download button, the DataLink software will download all of the current sessions within the Gas Badge Pro. Once the user presses the download button, all of the instrument sessions will be displayed on the screen. If the user wants to open one of those sessions, they must highlight the session that they want to look at and click on the Open File tab. Once that particular session is open, they can click on the Detail tab, which provides additional information. After the user has clicked on the Details tab, the user can then drill down into the data logging period in which they want to see. When the session has been selected for viewing, the user can click on the Graph tab, and the DataLink software will then show the information of this session just graphically. All of the readings the instrument saw during the session will be displayed just like this screen. If the user wanted to compare two or more sensors, they can click on this tab. What's important to know is that the Gas Badge Pro is a single gas instrument. This feature is reserved for a multi-gas instrument, which will allow the user to compare log data from different sensors. Finally, if the user is trying to save the session's data into a different file format, they can click on Export. Once the user has clicked on the Export tab, they must name that file and also direct that file to a folder. The data logging sessions can be formatted so that Excel accepts them by replacing the .csv with a .xls. Once the session is saved, the user can then locate that file, open it, and view that session as an Excel spreadsheet.